Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service to talk about variants on a popular antenna known as the dipole. That's the antenna I started with, and it's a commonly used antenna to this day for amateur radio operators. What I'm showing here is just a generic diagram of a half wavelength dipole, that means half wave from end to end electrically, one quarter of a wavelength on each side, a ballon in the center, a one to one ballon transformer, ideally, and then fed with coaxial cable, 50 ohm coaxial cable, something like RG8U, to the radio. This feed line should run away from the antenna at a 90 degree angle for at least a quarter of a wavelength and preferably a half a wavelength or more for best results. So this is a horizontal radiating element all in a straight line and when you do that you have a feed point impedance of roughly 73 ohms in fact in free space exactly 73 ohms. Well, you can uh, droop the elements of a dipole just the way that you can droop the radials of a ground plane antenna. And the more you droop them, the lower this feed point impedance will become until finally, if you droop them all the way straight down around the coaxial cable, you would end up with a zero ohm impedance at the feed point. You would in effect be feeding a quarter wavelength section of transmission line, parallel wire line, <laughs> with open at the far end, so the infinite impedance at the far end would get transformed into zero, but nobody's ever really going to do that. However, you can dupe these elements something on the order of 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Now, I don't know exactly what the angle is that will give you 50 ohms at this feed point, but there does exist such an angle. These little black circles are insulators, and then you just run the rest of the element, which is, you know, you use nylon cord or something like that, so these are each still a quarter of a wavelength long. Maybe cut just a little bit to make up for that droop. Some The droop will change the length just a bit, but you trim that until you get it just right. Once again, a quarter of a wavelength on each side. You still need the ballon. These angles should be equal, 45 degrees, 40 degrees. What This is a popular antenna known, of course you've heard of this one, inverted V. And it has uh, the advantage of offering a perfect match to 50 ohm coaxial cable if you get that angle just right. It also has another advantage which uh, may be of interest to you. It only needs one support and that's the one in the center. You can run these things down to the ground and presumably if you make that support high enough you can keep the ends of this antenna high enough up above the ground so that little kids aren't going to be tempted to touch them and get fried by the high radio frequency voltages that exist at the ends of such an antenna. Of course I wouldn't have to worry about that anyway because I run only 10 watts on CW or 7 watts on PSK31 so I'm not gonna fry anybody with that but if you're running high power you might be want to be careful about that. You can use a support, maybe a big tree will work, but you only need one of them and the feed point then has some additional support because of this vertical mast that supports the center of the antenna. With a dipole, maybe not. If you only have a support at each end here, this feed point is going to be hanging in the air it's going to get batted around by the wind and it's going to get punished and eventually it's probably going to give way on you. So that is the antenna known as the inverted V. Now, 
I would not recommend duping these uh, uh, radiating elements any more than 45 or maybe 50 degrees at the most because then they start the RF field starts to cancel itself out a little bit. Another advantage of the inverted V is the fact that uh, you get better radiation off the ends that is in the directions that the wires generally run. With a dipole low angle radiation off the ends if you get that thing up very high is not going to be good. Well, it's not going to be good in any case, regardless of height. But with an inverted V, you'll get a little bit of, uh, you'll get an improvement in the radiation off of the ends of the antenna and still get it off of the sides. So you'll have pretty much of an omnidirectional antenna. The polarization will change as you go around and around uh, in the points of the compass. Off the ends, it'll be vertically polarized off the sides horizontally or more or less horizontally polarized but that's rarely a concern at the frequencies that you're likely to use this type of antenna which would be 3.5 5 7 10 maybe 14 megahertz and possibly also 1.8 megahertz the 160 meter band but you'd need a pretty tall support in any case with an antenna like that. And I've got other solutions for 1.8 megahertz, like the Kite Zip, the Kytoon Zip that I talked about a while ago. But that is how the inverted V works and what its general advantages are. I think in a, in a lot of scenarios, it's an, an improvement over the dipole antenna. Stan Gibalisco. Whiskey One Good Vibrations saying 73 and so long.